In the previous video, we set up a four-node OpenStack deployment using Puppet Enterprise and Puppet Labs Grizzly. In this video, we're going to walk through how to get started with your new OpenStack deployment by showing how you can set up the quantum networking, upload a new machine image, launch that image, and attach it to storage. We're now going to take a short tour of the running OpenStack system. We log into our control node dashboard using credentials that were defined in our common.yaml file. We're going to start by setting up the virtual networking, create a public network, assign it to the test project, and make it a shared external network. This is the network that all of your virtual machines are going to use to connect out to the rest of the internet. You're going to select the public network and create a subnet. For our example, our public subnet is on 192.168.22.0. The gateway is at 192.168.22.2. And it's important to disable DHCP, set up an allocation pool for the floating IP addresses that are going to be assigned to virtual machines. In this case, we allocate 100 IP addresses from 100 to 200, and also set the DNS name server. Now we're going to create a private network. This is the network that the virtual machines will communicate amongst themselves over. Assign it to the test project and make it a shared network. Select the private network and create a subnet. In this case, we're going to select the 10.0.0.0 subnet. We're going to use the default gateway of 10.0.0.1. And for the subnet, we are going to enable DHCP so that our virtual machines can have their network set up automatically. We'll also give it the same DNS name server for the public network. If we go to the project tab and then look at the network topology, you can see that two networks have been created, the public network and the private network. We now need to create a router to connect the two networks. We'll just call it router. And we'll set the gateway to be the public network. We're going to select the router and add an interface so that we can connect the private network to the public network. Now, if you go back to the network topology, you'll see that there is a router connecting the public and the private networks. Now we're going to go to access and security and create a key pair that we can use to log into the virtual machines. Select create key pair. We'll give it the name test. Create the key pair and the private key is automatically downloaded to your computer. We also need a test image. So we're gonna start by uploading an image. We're going to use the Cirrus image, which is a publicly available Linux distribution, about nine megabytes in size, that is a great way to test your OpenStack installation. The format is QCOW2. Make the image public and create it. Now that the image is loaded, we can launch it. We'll give it the instance name Cirrus. For access and security, we're going to use our test key pair. We'll attach it to the private network. And we'll launch the machine. It'll take a few minutes to build the machine and launch it on the host operating system. Once the status is active, you can select the Cirrus machine and connect directly to it with a console. Here you can see it booting up. You can log in with the default user and password. Check the network settings. You can see that we're on the private network connected to our default gateway. Although we're only on the private network, the machine can also see the external world. But right now, there's no way for us to log into our new virtual machine from the outside world. So let's go back to instances and assign a floating IP to this virtual machine. Under more, you can select associate floating IP. No IP addresses are available but clicking the plus allows you to allocate one from the floating IP pool. You allocate the IP and then associate it with the virtual machine. Now switch to the console on your local machine. Using the private key that we'd created earlier, we can SSH directly into the Cirrus machine. Notice that we have the same network settings and we're on the same machine. Finally, we can attach volume storage to this virtual machine. Go to volumes, Click Create Volume, we'll call it Test, and just give it a size of one gigabyte. Once the storage has been created, 
you edit the attachments, select an instance, and a device name that you want to attach it to. Click Attach Volume. If we go back to the console where we logged into this machine, we can format that drive now, and then we can mount it. Checking the free space, we can see that on device VDB, mounted on mount, there's one gigabyte of storage. So going back to the project tab and selecting the network topology, you can see that we've created a public network, a private network, connected them with a router, and then attached a virtual machine to the private network. All of these components are being hosted on the four node OpenStack deployment that we set up using Puppet Enterprise. The control node, the compute node, the network node, and the storage node. These match the roles and profiles that we defined in the Puppet Labs Grizzly module. All of the traffic for the public and private networks is being routed through the network node that we set up. The virtual machine is being hosted on the compute node. The storage that we attach to the virtual machine is being hosted on the storage node, as well as the image that we use to launch the virtual machine. All of these systems are being controlled by our control node. Puppet Enterprise helped us to install almost 1,500 resources. But it also allows us to maintain this system over time by preventing configuration drift. And if we want to expand our storage or compute capacity, it's easy to add new compute and new storage nodes, assign them the roles, and apply the configurations. They'll automatically be rolled into your OpenStack configuration. OpenStack is a very powerful cloud computing platform, but it's also very complex to deploy and maintain. Puppet Enterprise, along with the Puppet Labs Grizzly module, helps you manage that complexity.